Okay, a very fine morning to you. I am Clyde with PT3D, and today we are going to swap out our hot end because we're having some extrusion issues. So let's get started on that real quick. This is a pretty quick process, and uh, assuming you have a one-to-one -one swap, this does not take long at all. Just be careful to keep track of your screws so you don't lose them, and try not to strip anything out because that would be very unfortunate. I'm going to try and do a little better job today by keeping the camera in focus. That way you have a better experience. So today I'm working on the Anycubic Chiron. Um, that is the largest format printer that I have that utilizes the Ultra Base. And uh, <clears throat> I've had pretty good luck with it so far. Um, up until recently, I had a jam in my extruder, and then, for whatever reason, ever since then, it has been acting up. So I'm not sure just yet where the issue is, but this is part of the troubleshooting process, so that's why I'm doing this with you, so you can see kind of what I'm doing, and I'll post videos as I go, so you can see whether or not what I did worked. Okay, so inside here we'll swap gears or you know swap gears we'll swap views here and you can see where these this is the thermistor wire this is the hot end or the heat cartridge wire and there's a little tiny uh it's really hard to get the view right but if you look right in there you might be able to see where they're connected and what we're going to do is right up underneath this lip here up under here Let's see if i can focus that a little bit we are going to pull the hot end, and then we are going to pull the thermistor, okay? So those are out of the way. Those are the two primary ones that we need to worry about for this. Okay, so now that we've got those out of the way, we're going to focus on the rest of this. So up here, <clears throat> there's a collar. This is actually what holds the... Um, heat sink slash heat break in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those screws out. And I'm going to leave that one in there because I can't grab it with my finger at the moment. Alright, so we got that one. And this uh, cable guide can get in the way. But it's, it's a really good thing to have because it does help with the cable management. So it's just a little in the way. That's all. Um, I did just preheat this, so you want to be careful, you know, because I had to remove the filament. So you don't want to burn yourself. So be, be careful with that. If you have forgotten to uh, remove the filament like I had, <clears throat> this, uh, well, all right, so now we've got the spacer, Ivan Miranda, spacers, we're going to take the, uh, collar, or the, uh, connector off, and we're just going to pull that right out, we're going to lay that down, <clears throat> this is the replacement, so if you're interested in the stock number on this, that is the stock number. This is through Tri Gorilla, and I purchased this on Amazon. Just in case you're interested. I have no affiliate links with them, so what you find is what you find. Um, I did notice that the other ones were actually out of stock. So if this is something you need, you may have to get creative when you're looking for it. So let's see if we can get this to fit like it's supposed to. Ah, see this right here? That zip tie is 100% in my way. So I can't get that. Well, let's see if we can push it through. Plastic flexes, right? I don't recommend doing this, but 
I think, oops, see now that, that's a problem right there. I just decoupled the connector. I'm looking for a tool. I have fat fingers, so fat fingers do not help when trying to keep things together. So, and of course this one, uh, man, look at these things. I've never actually pulled one of these off and I'm not really impressed with it. The shielding is actually too far, you know, back on this so it moves around a little bit. So you gotta kind of pull the shielding back. I'm gonna try and get this in here with my fingers since I don't feel like going and looking for a pair of tweezers, which I guess I could have had ready for the video, but I did not, so my apologies. <clears throat> wow, we may have to revisit this. Because this is this is absolutely not working at all. We may have to put a little piece of tape on here because I mean you can see just how much that moves around in there. If I pinch this tight, I might be able to do it. But it's not a lot of space in here to work with, and you can see that that fitting just keeps really wanting to move on me. Which I mean, I, I recommend having these. Uh, all right, I'm gonna have to do something different. <sighs> Let's find the tweezers. These two minute videos, you know, I end up taking more time because I have to find the correct tools to manipulate things that I accidentally unplug. So, we're gonna try and do it with the tweezers which is not working quite as well as I was hoping it would. So what we're gonna do is poke myself first with the tweezers to make sure they're sharp, and they are, so that's good. And then we are going to try to figure out how to get around this corner with the PTFE tubing in place. And I'm having a heck of a time doing that. There we go. So let's make sure this one's still in place. All right. <clears throat> All because I wanted to be lazy and not cut this little connector off. Which I'm now gonna rectify because that is ridiculous. Might still be able to keep it in place, which would be beneficial later. All right, so now you want to keep your wires facing the front. Now that I've gotten this thing back together again. Um, <clears throat> you pull your collar. And you're going to want to put it in place. And since we have a screw still in there, we're going to try and coax that out. So let's try to... I can make everything look difficult. It's in my way. Then we're gonna just put it back in again. <clears throat> All right, so make sure you're aligned. So everything looks aligned. We're gonna put this screw back in, but we're gonna put it in up here. That way I have everything anchored and locked in place. Okay, so make sure you're facing forward. And we are. Um, I may have to loosen that one up just a touch, just because I don't like uh, over tightening everything because then you end up with uh, possibility of, you know, cross threading and stuff. And I don't like cross threading. So, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to back this one up a little bit, let that gap come back a little bit. <coughs> And 
All right, so we got that one in, and we're gonna get this one in. so we can try to figure out what's binding up and moving around on things so because uh, this one does not want to bite so we're going to try and get that one in ah, my fingers do not like to work properly on stuff like this I don't know why but that's why they make tweezers, right? So you can put tweezers in. All right. So I'm gonna kind of get to it. Not lose my bet. Start. Tightening these up a little bit, that way we can get everything to stay nice in alignment. I'm just snugging them down a little bit. This back one's always a pain because of the cable guide, so. <clears throat> but once this one's tight, I'll go back through and tighten the other ones just a little bit. So, I'm not really tightening them massive amount just enough to keep them from wiggling too much you're gonna have a little bit of wiggle anyway because of the uh, rollers on the back of here so all right so now once again I have this loose connector which is driving me nuts I've never had this problem before until today so I guess uh, it is what it is. Um, you probably can't see too awfully well, so I apologize for that, but I'm actually just kind of putting these connectors back in place. Same place that we pulled them out of. see what I'm doing here so what we're gonna do is you can see this one right there we have to get this in the right orientation and get that plugged in it's not the most convenient of setups but ideally you don't have to do this very often so So there's the one, and you want to make sure this is your X min, so you don't want to do that. This is your thermistor, and I have removed the uh, the orientation for the uh, the X because I wanted to be able to work here. It's just because I got things were twisted a little bit, so they were just a little bit out of orientation, so. All right, so now everything is plugged in and ready to go. So now you just wanna carefully make sure your cable management is okay, and then just kinda of slide it into place. Then you wanna grab your screw. Any of them will work, I usually start from the other side, but since I'm already here, I'm just going to start here, and we're just going to put that screw back in. I 
again, just I'd like to loosen, keep them a little loose before I, you know, commit to snugging them down to make sure that, you know, maybe I missed a cable or something's not quite lined up or, you know, just any number of things that can happen when you're putting things back together. So just kind of go slow, be careful and all that. So again, not overly tight. over that way you can see the screws because they are very important you want to see those right so we can get that one right there we're going to, have to manipulate the housing a little bit to get that lined up and in this one we're actually going to snug it down so we're just going to go until it bottoms out and then make sure it's tight so yep that's nice and tight this one you can see how loose that is now because I haven't actually tightened it up yet now the other test you're gonna to want to do is when you turn this on you're gonna be listening for the fan make sure that it's not smacking any of those all right, this concludes your hot end. So here, we'll uh, give you the, the happiness part here, which is basically taking it and plugging it in here. Make sure that your travel distance is good. So you wanna take your gantry and move it. Make sure you have just enough slack in here so it's not fetching up. All right, so <clears throat> once you have completed this process, um, it's important that you make sure that number one, and we'll turn it on real quick. And the cooler fan over here is running right now. At least it should be, which it's not. But I think it's because my hot end's off. So I'm gonna turn the hot end on just real quick. Something low temperature. All right, this fan's not spinning just yet, so hopefully it'll start here in a second. All right, there we go. So this one right here, as you can see, is spinning. So that this is your cooler. So we're good. We don't have anything buzzing or vibrating, so that's good. Um, the only other step you want to do is make sure that you, uh, once you put in your new nozzle and it's all reassembled, you go through and you attach your probe and reprobe re your uh, build surface. Again, I can't recommend enough. Make sure that this build surface is at whatever temperature you plan on printing at, and then run the leveling, leveling sequence. So, all right, well that concludes our swapping of the any cubic Chiron um, hot end. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I thank you for watching.